What's up creators, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to replicate the Kodak 3x400 in digital photography. As always, this video was suggested by some of you guys in the comment section on a previous video. So again, if you have any video that you want me to make or style that you want me to replicate, don't hesitate to put it down in the comment section and I'll slowly check it out. Now, you know how this works. First of all, we're gonna check out some example images shot with the 3X400. So we learned the main characteristics in terms of exposure and contrast, and then we're gonna jump into Lightroom, apply that knowledge into editing a photo and creating a preset out of it. So here I have some images shot with a 3x400 and the first thing that I can see is that it produces an image with a lot of information. It's almost a flat looking exposure because in the shadows, the midtones and in the highlights we have a lot of information. We're not going to see any overexposure in the skies and we're going to see all the detail in the clouds because the skies are a bit darker than usual, they're a bit brought down. Opposite to that, the shadows also have loads of information because they're brighter. Notice here the difference between the sky and the dark side or the shadow side of this tram, notice that there's very little difference in terms of contrast and exposure. They're very similar to each other, creating a very flat looking image. So in terms of digital photography, we can achieve this by raising up the shadows and then lowering the highlights so they're very similar to each other and we have a flat looking exposure in our midtones. Now having this loss of contrast in the middle ranges of our exposure doesn't mean that we're losing our extremes. The blacks are still present, they're very deep and very strong when they are in the image. And then the whites also are in the verge of overexposure. For example, look at this shirt over here, which is considered as white, and look at the comparison with the sky, which should be considered as highest, a bit down in the exposure. They're very different to each other. One is a lot darker, very unnatural, and the other one is very natural. So we have to keep that in mind. We need to push our whites over to the overexposure and our blacks to the underexposure. Meanwhile, in the mid ranges, we're gonna have more detail and more information. Now, finally, another aspect, which is a, a main characteristic of our film stocks that we need to nail down is the amount of the grain and the size in particular. Right here, the size is not too big, not too small, I would consider it medium, but it's not too grudgy, it's not too contrasty, but it is present throughout the entirety of the image in an abundant manner, so we have to keep that in mind when we jump into the effects tab within Lightroom. So that's it for the analysis, black and white photography is not too difficult, so we're gonna jump into Lightroom and recreate it step by step so you guys can follow along, but before that, I'm gonna remind you that this preset that we're gonna create today is included in the Edit -like Preset Pack V4, but also the Analog Preset Pack. Now, in the Analog Preset Pack, you're gonna find all the film styles that we replicated throughout all the years and as we continue to analyze more film stocks more are going to be added into that pack so that's a great way you can skip all these tutorials but in the process you can support me so check them out link up here to my shop if you want to support me over there i'm very thankful and if you can't don't worry guys let's jump into lightroom and start color grading Okay, creators, here I am in Lightroom Classic. I'm in the library module, and don't worry if you're using another version of Lightroom, it's exactly the same steps and exactly the same tools. So I'm gonna select, I think, this image of my friend Patricio with D on my keyboard or by selecting the develop module over here. I'm gonna move into our editing tab. Okay, the first thing that we need to do before we start editing, we need to convert this image into black and white. Now you could go with the saturation slider, go to the minus 100, and there we have a straightforward solution but the way that I like to do it is by changing the color profile of our image. So I'm gonna go into profile over here and select Adobe Monochrome. You can always select V on your keyboard to change back and forth, or by selecting this quick button over here, black and white, or to color. Now I like to use color profiles because it's changing the way Lightroom is interpreting the colors coming from your image as if your image was entirely shot in black and white. Therefore tools like vibrance and saturation, well, they're basically nullified and in color mixer we can't change the hue or saturation of hues we can only change the luminance so this is just changing the tools in our develop module so they work better with black and white workflows okay now we can start our edit trying to replicate the kodak 3x400 now first of all we're going to go with the basic corrections that we have over here highlights shadows whites and blacks and the tone curve to adjust our contrast and exposure as a reminder the 3x400 had loads of information in the shadows and in the midtones and in the highlights but in the whites we had a bit of overexposure and the blacks were very intense so first of all the highlights i'm not going to go towards the positives otherwise we'll introduce more brightness and as you can see if i push the brightness or the highlights towards the positives details like we have over here in the sky are going to start to disappear what we want to do is do the opposite, bring more information into the bright areas on our image and the sky. So I'm gonna to go towards the negatives. And in this case, maybe around the minus 50, is just gonna be a good value. And we can see more information starting to appear in the skies, in the clouds, and here in my background. Now with the shadows, I'm not gonna to go towards the negatives just like we did with the highlights because we introduce more darkness and therefore we lose information. 
what I want to do is do the opposite that we did in the highlights. So I'm going to go towards the positives with a value around the 50 to 55 to 60% to add more brightness into the dark areas in our image. I'm gonna go with 55. And immediately you can notice with Y on our keyboard, the difference, how our edit is looking a lot brighter with a lot more information in areas in the previous image that we didn't have information. For example, over here in the lens, you can see more detail. Okay, so right now our image has loads of detail in the shadows and also in the highlights, just like we saw in the example images. But in the extremes of the example images, we did see a bit of overexposure in the whites and very deep and contrasty blacks. So now we're going to make use of the white and the black sliders that we have over here, which will control the extremes. The darkest points on our image with the blacks and the brightest points on our image with the whites. So whites, I'm not going to go towards the negatives, but towards the positives, just to make sure that the brightest points on our image are more tending towards the overexposure. With a plus 20 is the value that I'm going to go. Now blacks, I'm going to do the opposite to that, I'm going to go towards the negatives, ensuring that our blacks are strong and still present on our image with a minus 20 as well. Next, if we move further down, we have the presence tab, texture, clarity, and dehaze. Maybe if you're using Lightroom Mobile, they're in a totally different menu, but these are included in the basic corrections here in Lightroom Classic because they also alter the contrast and exposure of our image. So I'm gonna make use of these in particular because this image that we have over here is shot with a 33 megapixel sensor with a very sharp and contrasty lens. And if we zoom in, this image is supremely sharp. You cannot achieve these results with these cameras that we have over here and we'll try to replicate a film stock. So what I'm gonna do is use the present sliders over here to make our image look a bit more old. So first of all, I'm gonna zoom in just a bit and texture what I will do is add more digital sharpness towards the positives, but towards the negatives, we take it away, making our image a slightly less sharp and more soft. So I'm not gonna go towards the extreme, but maybe around the minus 20 is just gonna be enough just to reduce that extra sharpness that we have in digital photography. Then clarity, what it will do is add more contrast into the mid-tones, similar to what modern day lenses do. In the mid-ranges of our exposure, they're supremely sharp, not so in the corners. So what I'm gonna do is not go towards the positives, but go a bit towards the negatives again, to the minus 20, not to the extreme, otherwise our image is very flat and we'll lose all semblance of contrast. So maybe around the minus 20 is gonna be a value uh, that's enough and then the haze towards the positives well it does what it says it makes your image a bit more clearer if you have any haze or any smoke but towards the negatives it adds more simulated haze to your image uh, if you go towards the negative notice how this glowing effect starts to appear in all the highlight ranges and this is very similar to the halation effect of old cameras so in this case towards the negatives I'm not going to go towards the extreme but maybe around the minus 10 minus 15 ever so slightly just to make our highlights glow just a bit more as if they were shot with an old camera okay so now that we've reduced a bit of the texture the clarity and added a simulated halation effect our image is looking very nice but what problem that I have with the presence tab is that the haze in particular, it reduces a bit of the contrast on our image. If I reset the haze, notice how our blacks are a lot more natural. So if I add some dehaze, we're taking a bit of the strength. So what I'm gonna do is return a bit of the strength to the blacks with the tone curve. So this point at the bottom left corner of the tone curve will control the dark areas on our image. If I drag it upwards, our blacks become brighter, which isn't what we want. What I want to do is drag it towards the right to make them a bit stronger. Now I'm not gonna move them too much, otherwise this is way too intense for this preset, but maybe a value around the 5% is just gonna be enough just to return a bit of the strength to our dark areas on our image. So this is before and after, and it's a very subtle change. Okay, so the preset is basically complete. We only have one step to go because tools like the color mixer, color grading or camera calibration, well, this is black and white, we're not gonna use them. So I'm gonna go into the effects tab that we have down here and the final step is adding the grain. So first of all, to activate the grain, we need to add some amount. So I'm gonna go all the way to the plus 100. And being at the plus 100, it isn't the value that we're gonna select at the end, but it's gonna help us to play around with the other values. So first of all, size. I'm gonna bump up the size, not too much, otherwise the particles are way too big and way too distracting. And maybe around the value of 50 to 55 is gonna be a good value for me. Yeah, it's gonna be a medium size, and then the amount, I'm gonna reduce it. Maybe around the 25 to 30, I'm gonna go with 30. And then we have a very nice grain, but it isn't too distracting. But it is present, giving it a nice, nice texture to our image. 
Now, just a little disclaimer, maybe you guys need to adjust the value of the size over here, depending on the resolution of your file. Why? Because I'm applying a 55% of size to an image shot with this resolution over here. Maybe if your file is a bit smaller, the grain is actually looking a lot bigger in your image. So maybe you need to bring it back just a bit, or maybe you're editing an image with higher megapixels and the grain that I'm adding at 55 is way too small. And maybe you need to go towards the positives with the size. So play around with the size value over here, depending on how big your image is. Okay, so now our edit is basically complete. With Y on our keyboard, we can see the before and after, and you can see how our original image was a lot more punchy and contrasty, and we lost a lot of information in the dark areas. Now we have more detail, and also in the highlights, we have a lot more information. Basically, we have a flat looking exposure in the mid ranges, but in the extremes, we're retaining those contrasty blacks and those intense whites. All this while also making our image look a lot older, reducing a bit of the contrast and the sharpness of modern day photography and adding a very nice grain to our entirety of the image. I think we did quite a good job replicating the 3x400. Now before we save the preset, it's always a good practice to test out these settings in a couple of other images to see if we did a good job or if we need to modify them before we export the final result. So by selecting right click settings and going into copy settings, we can select here the values that we did use. I'm gonna select copy. So this image is a bit contrasty, but let's see how the preset performs over here. So right click, settings, I'm gonna select paste the settings. And you can notice the difference, how our original image was very contrasty, uh, maybe a bit underexposed, but now we have loads more detail in the dark areas of our image. It's a lot flatter, we have more information while making the image look a lot older. So I think it looks quite fantastic. How about over here in a more contrasty situation, right click, paste the settings, and yeah, it looks incredible. Notice how the sky is a lot darker, which is something that we saw in the example images. The dark areas on our image, for example, the trees over here, notice how in the shadows in the original image, we couldn't see any detail. Now over here, we can see the leaves and the branches, and then the whites are still bordering the overexposure, which is exactly what we wanted. We have a very nice grain, and this image is looking fantastic. So I think we did quite a good job. Now let's save the preset. So we're gonna go to the left panel over here, on the preset, select the plus sign, create a preset. Here, remember to name it. And you don't wanna mark anything that you didn't use and mark everything that you did use. So for example, white balance exposure and contrast, I don't like to mark them. So maybe if my image was poorly shot on field and I need to correct a bit of the exposure, I use these values over here. So once set that, I'm gonna hit create. How about this image in Corsula in Croatia? Let's apply the preset. I mean, you can notice how the sky got a lot darker and we have loads more information in the dark areas on our image. It looks fantastic. And remember, you can also play around with the amount slider of the presets. This is available in all versions of Lightroom. You can make the preset a lot softer towards the negatives or double down towards the positives to plus 200 to make your preset a lot more dramatic. And essentially what you're doing right here is just doubling down all the values that we did. For example, remember that in texture and clarity, we added a minus 20, now it's minus 40. And notice how the highlights and shadows are way towards the plus 100s, making them very extreme changes. So this image right here with the 200% of the preset is looking very retro, fantastic. I could always go ahead and in the effects tab, add some vignette towards the negatives to make your image look a bit older and a bit more dramatic. But in general terms, I think we did quite a good job replicating the Kodak 3x400 in digital photography. Now, in this video, I did go a bit slower just because I read some comments that some of you guys enjoy following along the tutorial and editing at the same time. So I went a bit slower so you guys can go ahead and edit at the same time with me. And remember that this preset is in the AI like preset pack V4, but also the analog preset pack. So link up here in case you want to support me, check out over there in my shop. There you can find my personal presets and personal LUTs that I use all the time to edit my videos and photos in a faster manner. And if you can support me by purchasing anything over there, I'm very thankful. But if it's not in your possibilities, don't worry guys, just like the video, share it with a friend or share it on social media. That actually helps me out quite a bit. Leave me down a comment down below, subscribe, all those things. I'm Tony Fuentes, just to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.